Hello all my chickadees. Welcome back to Sacrium Paro. Now this is a demo, but it's a long demo. <laughs> and this is actually part two. If you haven't checked out part one, it's up on my channel. Go check it out so you know what the heck's going on. Um, for you, for those of you who are uh, tuning tuning back in, remember we got kidnapped and then we got kidnapped again. <laughs> so. Here we go. Let's pick up where we left off. It's been a little bit since I recorded the first one, so I might have forgotten what voices I was using. So, uh, let's see. This one. Yeah, that's where we left off. We, um, were taken off of a boat, and then we woke up, and we're in a room, and this guy is watching us. He looks like a doll. Look at all the little ball joint things. Okay. You were right the first time. Oh, his little his mouth was moving as he was talking. That was really cool. The shock turned into slight amusement while he tucked the da dagger away. Good afternoon. Rather blood uh blas for the situation at hand. Panicking won't do much for me, will it? You don't strike me as the type who gets off on people begging. <laughs> Keen assertion and mostly accurate. What do you think it uh getting on my good side will do for you? I don't know. Depends on what kind of host you feel like being. Host? Am I a host or a warden? There's evidence for both, so I don't know. <laughs> After all, I'm chained up like a prisoner, but in a room like a guest. It's an odd situation to interpret. Oh, dang, what a deep laugh, dude. To, I, to my surprise, the man chuckled. That was surprisingly amusing. He stared at me intently. Maybe you'll be worth something after all. I didn't know how to feel about the slight interest that flickered to life in his gaze. Eh, I don't know either. <laughs> what do they want us for? I know they like run experiments and stuff, but... Any further odd conversation was cut off by the door to the room opening. The ship's attacker pranced in, tilting his head. Oh, it is voiced a little... Oh, he calls he calls the um the dude on the right his sunshine. Oh, are they a couple? Did you laugh, my Did you laugh, my sunshine? He raised a brow. Surprising, I know. Does this mean you're less upset with me? You were still in trouble. <laughs> Did they have a ball? Oh, look, look at his face. He's like, oh no, I'm still in trouble. <laughs> okay, and I don't know. I think it said he spoke lightly, and that's why I was giving um the tall guy the um the soft voice. And now, but the other guy has a deep voice, and I don't think this matches. I might have to switch them. Damn. The smaller man sighed and pouted. Okay. I don't know if you guys heard that, but okay. I'm going to have to turn the audio up a bit for you guys can hear all these noises. That's definitely deep. Okay, the guy on the right is now going to have the deep voice. I erred. I erred so hard. You did this to yourself. I know. The shorter man sighed and turned to face me. You're awake, which is good. Any problem with your vision? Odd spots? Shorter range? No, but it's hard to tell for sure in a dim room. Ah, right. My sunshine can see in the dark. He laughed and waved a hand in front of his face. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, The little guy is blind and deaf, I think. Think he's deaf? 
I know he's blind for sure. So, wow, this they're an interesting combination. I haven't needed the light in a long time. We make sure to brighten the place up. Must we? I'd rather our guest not break... Or I'd rather his guest not break his neck walking around. So, yes, Viv. Viv. Let out a disgusted grunt. No issues with your hearing, it seems. No, I hear fine. I'm surprised you can hear me. Wasn't it interesting because he couldn't hear me? Wasn't I interested in because he couldn't hear me? I can't hear you. I can hear the air elementals I have attached to you repeating what you say to me. Oh, that's clever. My eyes flickered around me out of habit. My chains preventing me from opening my third eye meant the gesture was meaningless. Which does make you so fascinating. I've never had to do this before. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, you're super close now, babe. The small man stepped forward and grabbed at my face. Well, I have done it once before, a long time ago. It's quite the strain on him, too. Be careful he deems you worth the effort. Not a strain, but an inconvenience. Elementals are fussy, unreliable tool. The fingers on my chin uh, trailed up my face. How do you feel? Be honest. Terrified, he said, to be honest. There was no other answer given the true horror of my situation. Two men living in a castle under a red sky. One of those men was called Viv. Viv had an unnatural, inhuman appearance. And he's glaring at us. Look at that. <laughs> I licked my lips in my nervousness. Terrified? Whatever for? Unless... He cupped my face and leaned in. You've pieced together what you are. Such a smart little thing. <laughs> it's not that impressive. Viv rolled his eyes. Only a fool wouldn't be able to piece this together. The pieces alone are screaming the answer. I tried recalling and combining irrelevant information under stress shows his abilities. So, I'm um, right? Well, or, well, you'd have to say it out loud first. I hesitated. Are you the creator in the creation? My mind went back to the chicken, uh, the running game children would play. The play creator and the one play creation would chase the rest. The play creator would tag someone and sing a song to turn them into a creation. The play creation would then try, uh, Try to tag the new ones to kill them. The echoes of childish laughter in our play songs had me shuddering. He'll make more, he'll break more. The cycle never ends until we're all dead friends. My hands were freezing despite the hot and wet air in the room. <laughs> the smaller man laughed in delight. See? Our guests did figure it out. Mm. Viv sounded less than impressed. Proper introductions are only prolite. I am, uh, v Violo? Violo? Though you seem to know me as the creator. Violo tilted his head in the direction of Viv. That sourpuss is the creation. Vivir. Obvious. Obviously. Viola finally released my face. Welcome to Perio. You'll be staying with us for quite some time. Viola clapped his hands together and gave me a big smile. If it was meant to comfort me, it had the opposite effect. You see, you are quite the fascinating find. Despite having mana of your own, your soul is void. What? <laughs> The things I put up with. <laughs> he has such a deep voice. It is giving me like 
Frankenstein and his creator vibe or creation vibes. Oh, please. Vivir tossed his hair over his shoulders and glared at me. There's no way you haven't noticed the oddness of your body. It's surprising you haven't been killed on accident. True, even with both of us managing, the elementals are noting some sluggishness. Which means we pour too much energy into you while healing. That can be fatal, you know. To you and the healer. I imagine char uh, healers charging you an arm and a leg for repeat visits. I flinched. Oh, is that right? <laughs> that was true. How, how do you know I haven't... Uh, how do you know I have mana, line, mana lines? Beyond the fact I cut you open to check... Dude! Dude, you freaking cut us open while we were knocked out? Well, at least I healed us up afterwards, but still, he cut us open. <laughs> He's just like, do, 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 do. I'm just going to cut you open, have a little eye top, see, see what's going on in here. Poke, poke, poke. <sighs> I shuddered and looked down at my body, unable to find signs of ex his exploration. You have, aurora, uh, you have aura burns in your mouth from spell work. My sunshine says you also have discoloration under your nails. Which is common in spell words. There's also the fact that the runes are active. We both received the alarm that you tried to open your third eye. What else could you be? <laughs> Violo laughed. This makes your situation all the more intriguing. Your soul is willing to absorb any and all magic thrown at it. Telepathy, healing, illusions, who knows what else? This violates the law of nature. Human souls are not supposed to be limitless. A, hu a human body will shatter if one pours too much energy into it. You still seem vulnerable to that. It'd be a shame if you died on accident. The way he said that clued me in that if it was by his hand, it wouldn't be an accident. Mm, yeah, he... <laughs> I think he wants us dead, right? <laughs> Why is that interesting? Aren't I a mere defect? Oh, hello! <laughs> Dude, buddy, you, you move quick! I need it. <sighs> Filio leaned in so quickly, our foreheads almost collided. I need that power. I need that void. His voice was desperate and almost reveriental. A fond smile crossed his face. And you're going to help me get it. After all, it's not like you can go anywhere. Feel free to try if you want to. Oh, that's him. Feel free to try if you want to. Veer shrugged his shoulders. Now, now, that'd be fatal. The grin became sharper then. I'm quite the grump when things get in the way of my studies. But that won't be a problem, right? <sighs> he didn't leaned in close one more time. Behave for now. We'll figure out what to do with you after the experiment ends. I shuddered. My captivity in Sark uh, Sacrium Perio had begun. No one hauled me into a cold room to cut me open. Violo and Vivir left after our uh, initial conversation, ordering me to rest for now. Some part of me struggled with the idea of sleeping in such a dangerous location. The exhaustion of my past two days won that struggle. I woke up the next morning feeling a little better. No monster waited to drag me somewhere. At least an hour had passed with no signs of someone calling for me. I wasn't about to waste the opportunity to explore. The rules of the, p the place was hardly defined, and I needed to push the limits to see what I could get away with. Oh, so we can explore now! Oh, this is pretty. I like that, though. 
Like where the um, nature is like slowly like taking over or like warming its way in. So hey, we're unchained now. Awesome. I guess as long as we don't run away or we're, we're kind of golden. To my surprise, the door to the room didn't have a lock. It swung open into an old hallway. Much like my room, dust and overgrowth dominated the hall. Candles and magical lights gave me enough to light to see by. No spare spells flared to life and attacked me when I crossed the threshold. No monsters came roaring down the halls to capture me. I hesitated. This level of freedom could be a ploy to trick me into misbehaving. The weight of the chains on me helped me realize what it actually was. It was neither a threat nor a flight risk. Hell, oh, we still have chains on us, but we can move around. It must just be like chains, like, you know, the magic restraints. But we're not like chained to the bed or the floor or something. Hell, I hadn't even been able to bathe properly because of the length of the chains. Bathing in chains meant scrubbing myself down while struggling to maintain my balance. I had no magic, limited mobility, no boat off the island, and I was powerless against living gods. They didn't need to lock me up in a room. I had nowhere else to go. The realization tastes bitter, my insides churning with nervous energy. I'd been a child the last time I was this cornered. Ignoring the sick feeling in my stomach, I continued forward down the hallway. The stagnant air didn't but budge beyond a mild increase in flor floral smells. With no way to determine direction, random chance was my only option. I moved with purpose. Instinct had me pre-check any corners before rounding them. I clung to the shadows despite the effort being pointless. The architecture of the place reminded me of Credessa. In fact, uh, Violo had muttered some words that sound like Cress. His traco lacked much of an accent, but those words were distinct enough, given the appro approximate time of his imprisonment. You know, I kind of, I kind of hope in the final game we end up with like a, um, like, guide. Like, we can go to, like, like you know, go to the main menu and you can, like, look up the words. Like, if you hadn't played for a little bit or you're getting confused and it, like, explains each of the terminology to you, that would be very helpful. <laughs> like, um, clearly, uh, Trato and Cress are, like, um, different languages, I'm guessing. Or, like, um, like, accents. Given the approximate time of his imprisonment, not, uh, not credit, uh, crescent in architecture, crescent impor imperium architecture. I felt a bit stupid of examining door frames, but I needed to know for sure. Sure enough, I found Imperia brass nails. The way they turned purple in the humidity confirmed it. But, you know, in a way, now I'm thinking about it, it's also kind of cool that they just throw you into the deep end of the pool and um, you're like, it's like nothing is being explained to you and you're just figuring it out on your own. That's like, whenever you come across a word and you don't understand the word, you read the sentence around it and then that helps you determine what the word means. That's kind of what I feel like is going on here. Like, that's how I used to read when I was young, like, really young, and I didn't know all the words yet. But I would teach myself what the word means just by figuring everything else around it. So, see, we're learning as we go. And it's not bathing us. So, in a way, that's cool, too. I like that. Just being thrown into this world, and we gotta figure it out. Like, we've always been there. <laughs> I'd only ever seen the nails in the museum cargo that I recovered from bandits. Okay, the na nails were in museum cargo, so apparently it is a very ancient type of building, um, like, technique, and, um, not really used anymore, so that means to say, this building is old. The weight of the history I stood inside felt heavy as hell. I drew in a nervous breath. 
It also didn't spell anything good for me. The Crescent Imperium became Cressa after a coup against the Cruel Tyrants. Okay, so the Crescent Imperium was like the former country before it became Cressa. Okay. If he was from the Imperium of old, he was even more dangerous than I first thought. Some part of me regret it turning out that babbling museum creator. You might have said something back then I could use now. But we didn't know. We didn't know. We were impatient. My investigation ended when the heavy thuds began to echo down the hall. Whatever the thing was, it was heavy and slow. It had more than two legs. As it grew closer, I could hear multiple moaning exhales off rhythm with one another. What kind of creature is this thing? Fear forced me into a tight crevice, obscuring myself with the overgrowth. I held my breath and waited for the creature to pass. It was horrifying to look at. A mass of twisted and warped flesh ambled forward with eerie precision. No feet to be seen. Dozens of arms acted as legs. Elongated fingers and palms slapped against the floor. It paused near me. The two strongest looking arms hit the ground and held the creature's long, twisted body up. Fused torsos creaked with the motions. The independent segments rotated, the arms attached to them reaching out. They stretched unnaturally long and padded around. The heads seemed to be many heads fused together. No, cat running the way! <laughs> Leaving only the noses and the mouths, black and yellow. The teeth chattered between the breaths. Sorry, I had a cat walking back and forth in front of the words. I couldn't read it all. But oh my gosh, what a creature. Dude, that... Yep, he's definitely been experimenting on things. Um... It seems like an outlast moment. <laughs> Crooked fingers brushed the overgrowth that separated it from me. I held my breath when some of those fingers began to poke around in the area in front of me. The vines tangled around its hand and it shook them off. The motion had the longest fingers ending up less than an inch in front of my face. The creature paused completely. Then... That hand surged forward and grabbed me. My arms swung up to try to ward the creature off. Despite many of the arms looking thin, they batted away my attack and... Cat, stop coming in front of me! And pulled me out of hiding. Oh no. Is this the guard? His hand wrapped around my thrashing limbs with ease. The thing lifted me atop its back and began to walk with me. I waited to be devoured. I had nowhere else to look but its ugly head. The mouths of it didn't look designated to tear flesh. The strength of its hands might allow it to rip me apart. It didn't. No, each motion while handling me remained firm yet careful. Something was up. I hung limply in the creature's gas to conserve my energy. I'd need it. The creature navigated the space with ex expert precision. Is he coming to fetch us? Is he just like, well, Master wanted him, so... <laughs> He's just going to take us directly to them, isn't he? I did my best to remember the path we took, noting down things I used as a reference point. We passed by more twisted creatures. No, this is amnesia. I'm sorry, this is not Atlas. This is amnesia vibes. And I love it. Some were mostly human. Two legs with their face warped beyond recognition. Those ones had no arms. They hobbled about, holding buckets in their mouths. Others were disgusting displays of cobbled together corpses. A few had no flesh at all and were bones moved by metal threads. Oh my gosh. It was yet another reason why these two didn't lock my door. They had constant security. Eventually, we approached a dark door that opened without being touched. The creature turned and tossed me through it. I rolled with the fall and got up on my feet, only slightly stumbling due to my leg chains. 
Oh, is this a laboratory? Ooh, it looks more like a library. It is a library. I was in a library or studies of short. Is that like a pile of like skeletons? It is. Okay. This looks really cool though. Books lined the walls and tables rested in various places. Odd things and disgusting things rested on top of them. Like everywhere else in the in the castle, plants had begun to reclaim the space. Unlike everywhere else, blood and rotting items joined the clutter. Vi uh, Violo stood at one of the tables, polishing what appeared to be human ribs. Okay, then. <laughs> Hello. Welcome in. He didn't bother to look back at me. Sorry to grab you, but you can't hear the L air elementals right now with the chains. Can your creations not talk? Originally, they could. It got annoying hearing them begging to die after a while. Oh my god. <laughs> so, I removed that ability. I shuddered at the casual cruelty. He spoke about it like it was something akin to changing curtains. You're tense. Don't tell me one little creation has you panicking. You're fail! Surely you, you've seen comparable sights. I flinched. H how do you know who I am? I asked around. He set, at the ri he set the ribs down and turned around. When he did, I saw blood stained his shirt. One of the crew rested on the table cut into pieces. Ooh. So, the other crew members that he decided were worthy enough to come with him, did he, like, interrogate them about us before killing them, apparently? Violo had removed the muscles in his arms and legs, and the sight of them dangling from a rack made me want to puke. Truly an intriguing situation. I knew you were fascinating, but I didn't know you were famous before this point. He wiped his hands on his dark pants. Sword. He held his hand out. I watched as the long sword grew small, uh, little black tendrils. It used those tendrils to move to him. Once it landed in his palm, he threw it at me. Dude! <laughs> He's like, okay, let me get this sword and just throw directly at us. I instinctively dodged away, only to see it land in front of where I'd been standing. Sparrow fail, the bane of the tourma uh, tourmaline wing. Experienced mercenary with at least 12 years of credited work. You made quite the impression on one of my little roses. She remembers you with such passion. All I had to do was ask, and I received quite the story. If you did, you should know I prefer sharpshooting. I do. I find archery boring for obvious reasons. He waved a hand in front of his face. Yeah, because you're blind. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm looking at this picture. Is that a... I'm trying to determine what it is, and it's... I'm probably wrong, but it kind of makes me think of a picture of um, his sunshine. <laughs> Vivir. Is that a picture of him? <laughs> or is that like a lady? It's hard to tell, but it'd be funny if it was a picture of Revere. Because <laughs> he can't see. And he's like, okay, well, let's just pop a picture of my sunshine up on the wall. And Revere would be like, why? You can't see it. And he's like, that's not the point. I know it's there. <laughs> you have an experience with a sword. At least a little bit. You have to since you're a mercenary in the, uh, Sarkata Seas. After all, swords are the separator of civilian and the professional. It indicates experience and money. I stare at the sword and bite back a sigh. He was right. Swords were expensive. Trade-specific tools. Most civilians who dabbled only used axes due to the added utility of having an axe. My own sword had cost me a pretty copper. I still mourn at its loss. Is our, was our sword on the ship... Hmm. Forgive me for not coddling you. Ring hubs are even more gruesome than my home. I refuse to accept that you can't stomach it. Not when you've seen worse. Just because I've seen worse doesn't mean I enjoy the sight. 
I suppose that's fair. Not everyone finds comfort in the same things. Most people don't find comfort in mutilated corpse. He gave me a sharp grin and nodded in agreement. And then again, I'm not mo most people. He gestured to the body on the table. Anyways, don't worry. You won't end up quite like this yet. I'm uncertain if killing you would remove that unique ability of yours. Quite yet, meant that that was still on the table. I'm free to make you wish you were dead if you don't cooperate, though. I'd rather not expend that effort, so please don't make me. Now, pick up that sword and fight me. Really? <laughs> he waved a hand. The chains that bound my wrists and ankles together faded into a flurry of flowers that drifted away. I immediately fixed my footings and reached inside myself. My energy had recovered. My third eye opened to its a uh, partial state and I winced at the intensity of the figure before me. Power rolled off of him in waves, pulsing like a heartbeat. It was so overwhelming that my eye closed against my will. I hadn't even been able to see the elementals attached to me. No coaxing elementals to help me when standing next to him then. I blinked a few times to get my bearings and there and saw where he waited. I don't like picking on people. <laughs> he threw his head back and laughed. I assure you. He held his hands out, cutting his palms open with his thumbnails. Black blood slid out and formed into two blades. Oh, he was ready to rumble. It is a picture of him! Come on, that is him! That is so him, right? I mean, look, you can see the little, like, color pits here. So he really does have a picture of him on his wall. <laughs> but he's blind. He won't be able to see it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I love that. Okay. Uh... One was a rapier, the other was a dagger. He held them both with practice ease. My ed education was far superior to yours. You can't hurt me unless I let you. Now, fight me. I need to see those limits of your endurance. His voice took on a, mani a manic edge. His usually wide eyes were even wider, and I could see the tense energy thrumming inside of him. He gave me no indicator of what, what he intended to do. I gripped the sword and... Okay, let's save. Uh, okay, I let it clatter to the floor, focused on being defensive, resolved to do my best. Um, clatter on the floor, that will make him bored. I'll be like, oh, come on, he'll be bored, and that'll make him upset. Uh, focus on being defensive, that means we're not trying, and it'll also make him bored. Uh, so let's resolve to do my best. I didn't know what stakes were at hand, but I knew they were high, high enough to care. Even if I could play it safe, that might not have been the long-term consequences I wanted. The creator was known for his mercurial mood and fast boredom. I couldn't risk not impressing him. It was terrifying to size him up, though. His stance told me nothing. I had no idea what he was going to do, and I didn't know how well he could read my intentions, either. Swordplay alone wouldn't help me stand out. I reached inside me and pulled at my energy. The energy flowed through me, sluggish as usual. I'd never had the fastest magical reaction time. I wondered if my void contributed to that problem. I was a thought for another time. Yeah, we need to focus on the sword fight right now, you know? <laughs> you know, that might be important. Oh, yeah. Ah, I have a cat here trying to destroy everything around me. Oh my gosh. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Chill. Chill. Okay. For now, I hoped his books were... Ah, you knocked that over. Okay. For now, I hoped his books were fireproof. I darted to the right while mumbling the words to the spell. An arcane signal glowed in the air to his left. I surged forward to try and push him back into it. His rapier flew up and parried my sword. 
Before I could even think about what to do next, I felt his dagger race across, rake across my throat. It, str it stung like hell. No blood came rushing out. It only winded me a little bit. One point for me. He gave me a cheeky grin. I scowled and hurried backwards before finishing the scale spell. The signal flared to life, erupting with flames. My mana lines ached at the heavy expense, but I still had some reserves. I ducked away from the flight, bright flames and light. I blinked and a uh, violo stood in front of me, sword pressed against my ribcage. He hadn't even been singed. Fantastic! Oh yeah, he's having fun. Look at this boy. Ooh, fire! Not my favorite element, but an impressive show. Two points for me. And I've noted that your spell work is very hard to detect. I didn't even know it was there for sure until I felt the heat. I gasped at his raw reaction time. If it was where he felt, if it was when he felt the heat, he had less than a second to move. How are your bones not dust? Hmm. Oh, they crack a lot. My healing abilities make up for that. Oh my god. He's like, oh, my bones crack, you know, but, you know, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, I heal really quickly. He shrugged. Bone is one of the hardest materials to heal. It takes so much energy. That was why I stopped fighting in the front lines. Oh, yeah, because we are suck at healing, that's right. Oof. A broken bone meant expensive healing bills and aches for me. What? I'd have to be able to run out of energy for that to be a concern. The hair on the back of my neck raised. I know no such physical or magical limits. Dude, you're a monster. You're you're crazy. That's like a lot of that's a lot of power for this little bitty guy. Even if my organs fail or my heart stops or my bones grind to dust. Work must always be done. His grin was happy as can be. Now, try again. He moved away from me to give me space again. I sat stunned in silence for a few moments. I defeated powerful foes with patient time and time again. Powerful spells meant expending precious resources, so they always burnt out. You only had to wait. But that wouldn't work here. My mind raced in the face of this challenge. In the end, I threw everything I had at him. Magical traps to try and snag him in motion. He tore through them with overwhelming strength. Blast of ice, fire, and more. He dodged out of the way. Increasing my own speed to the point where I felt my pinky crack. He matched it. Oh my god. He powerful. He's a powerful boy. A few times he played around with me, parrying my blows and not finishing the job until the very end. He hit me with the intention to lightly annoy, not harm. Bruises covered my thighs and my side from the time the twelfth bout began. Twelve? Oh my gosh. I weaved on my feet, bar barely breathing. He didn't even look at the slightest bit put out. How? Aren't you a researcher? The living god tilted his head at me. I come from a long line of mages and duelists, my dear. When I say my education was thorough, I meant it. Fuck. I tried to raise the sword again. My mana lives were empty. I had black spots in my vision. My balance faltered when I stepped forward. I ended up on my knees, wheezing. Aww. Aww, you tuckered yourself out. His blade slid back into his hands. He walked over and stroked a hand across my face gently. I felt his power pour into me. My aches and pains faded away a bit. He pulled back before healing them completely. We're done, I promise. Apologies if you still feel sore. I don't want to risk overburdening your body like last time. His voice was almost sweet. Almost like he was worried about me. Fantastic. Excellent work. Well, he doesn't want to break us. We're his precious 
new experiment and play thing. Of course, he, he's a little worried. He's like, we don't want to break him so soon. Yeah. Dude, he has so much energy. For once, he actually wasn't being too loud. No, his voice was low, and my growing headache appreciated it. His hand cupped my cheek, thumb idly stroking under my eyes. I made the right choice. I knew that I wouldn't regret this. He sighed fondly. You are enchanting. If you were trying to be impressive, you succeeded. It's been a long time since a guest was this fun. You soar above and beyond my expectations. He leaned in close to whisper. Continue this way, and it'll be good for you. I can be quite nice when motivated. He patted my cheek. Vilolo looked ready to say something else, but he paused and pulled away from me. I watched his eyes rotate upwards. He cocked his head back and forth a few times, like a confused dog. What? Now? He's probably starving, though. Violo looked in my direction. I've worked him over a bit. Who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. He nodded. Very well. His attention focused back on me again. My sunshine has sent for you. How are you talking to him? I, oh, what's his like little sprites over there with, um, Bavir? And that's how it came through? I tensed. Join him in the garden. He's promised to provide food for you. It's not poisoned, I promise. He doesn't hate you that much yet. The attempt at being comforting made me feel even more nervous. Um, well, where is the garden? I don't know, actually. I have no idea where anything is. <laughs> oh my god. That noise was me banging my arm against the shelf. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! <laughs> you don't know where anything is? How? You've lived here for how many years? Oh my gosh. <laughs> As he spoke, he snapped his fingers. Items in the room began to move around. After all, even if I forget where a door is, my lovely castle will just open walls for me. So the castle will shift around to help you get everywhere so you don't actually have to remember where everything is. What a little cheat code. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's really helpful if you're living in a huge castle. But at the same time, that's actually hilarious. He doesn't know where anything is. I mean, he is blind, but still. He laughed a bit and shrugged. Why risk bumping into tables when I can train the tables to move out of the way? He tapped his foot while thinking. Let me get one of the two legs to walk you there. They don't have that privilege. Can you stand? I could, but it hurt like hell. Yes. Good! Let's not keep him waiting. To my dismay, the chains reformed once more. They severed my connection to my mana lines. It made me feel even worse about the confrontation to come. What did Vivir want with me? Okay, this is a perfect place to end it for this part. Oh, <laughs> oh wow, that that was fun. I love seeing like um all that. Oh no, I left the thingy on the screen. No. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's gone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm a mess today. Um, I like that. That was really intense. Um, we learned that, um, our captor is a beast when it comes to fighting. He is so freaking powerful and quick. And he has the entire castle, like, under his control. Just like, hey, yeah, table, move. Wall, move. <laughs> and he has a portrait of Vivir on the wall. <laughs> Okay, um, there's definitely going to be another part, maybe another part after that. Um, the demo is actually 40,000 words long, from what it said. So, yeah, this is actually a long demo. 
It's going to take me a while to get through all of that for the demo, but this is worth it. I'm having a blast. I hope you guys are too. Um, let me know down below. What did you think of everything? And what do you think Revere's going to want with us? I mean, they have food for us, but um, we were promised the food is not poisoned. So, <laughs> we're going to have to wait and find out in the next one. <sighs> okay. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!